Hi, Phil Bradbury for Little Walter Tube Amps. Today, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the magic of a vacuum tube. And I'm going to try to illustrate with a chart or two what actually goes on inside the vacuum tube when we use it in our guitar amplifiers. But first, let's just remind ourselves how good the tone is of a really good vacuum tube amplifier. That, of course, was the phenomenal Dan Huff playing uh, the Little Walter Tube Amps Series 8 50 uh, through a 112 cabinet at the 2013 in Dorsey Jam held at the Station Inn. Uh, Dan put on quite a show for everyone that evening, as did everyone else. Now, what I'll be using in this demonstration are a few diagrams and we'll go to that now and let me try to explain the actual uh, function of the power tube inside the amplifier. All right, here's my first diagram and please bear with me. There are many types of vacuum tubes uh, that have uh, bunches of different applications, but this is going to be a very simplistic version of what is going on inside the kind of tubes that we would use in a guitar amplifier. Looking from the top down, the circle would represent the glass bottle of the tube. The lines protruding out of the glass bottle would represent the pins in the tube. Now I've only shown a few of the pins, just enough to give you an idea of what's going to happen. We have the cathode and the two pins that stick out of the tube where you hook the filament power supply. You have the grid. That's where your signal will enter the tube. And then we've got the anode or the plate. Actually, the cathode emits over to the anode and it travels through the grid. Now, the cathode is treated with a material, a chemical, that promotes the expelling of electrons. Electrons are very important to this procedure. They're negatively charged electronic particles. That's as deep as we need to go. But when you turn on your first power switch on the amplifier, as you see in the, the diagram now, we now have some current going into the filament power supply and the cathode is starting to glow. It's basically a heating element. And as the cathode gets hot, it expels more electrons, which is the, the purpose. So we've, we've got some little electrons, some little negative charged particles racing off of the cathode, racing toward the anode at this point. Now, when you turn your amp off standby, this is where the big current, a large DC current, hits the anode or the plate and when you have a positively charged anode, it attracts the electrons greatly. That's what we want to do. We want to pull them in like a magnet and pull them through the grid. That's the key right there. Now, this is where the magic occurs. You plug your instrument in and you start to play. And as you notice on the left side of this last diagram, the small blue arrow represents your signal, which is an AC signal coming into the tube and hitting the grid. Well, notice how the electrons coming off of the cathode are passing through the grid, and just for the sake of this discussion, I've turned them blue as if they've picked up your signal and they're carrying them to the anode or the plate. This is where the amplification takes place. And it's, again, I'll say, it's magic to me because these elements are not connected inside the tube. They literally beam from one side to the other. Now, 
I would like to point out also the, the large red arrow where the high voltage is coming into the tube through the anode, into the anode, that's also collecting that tiny AC signal that is a little larger now because it's been amplified. But that has to go out of the tube on the same pipeline, let's say, that carries the high DC voltage into the tube. So we're, we're, what we do here is we use a signal capacitor and it, what you'll notice is that the blue goes up to the signal capacitor and goes completely through and continues through the circuit of the amplifier. But you notice how there's no red going through the signal cap. That's what we're using this particular capacitor for. It's blocking DC current and allowing AC current to flow through. So once again, my hat's off to the people who design these fantastic tools because they uh, they actually combine the AC and DC current and then separate it again as it goes to the next stage of the amplifier. Okay, science class is officially over. The nice thing about it is I will not be giving a test. But I do hope that you share my enthusiasm about how fantastic these little things are right here, these vacuum tubes and how they produce such beautiful tone, uh, such as what we heard Dan Huff play earlier. Now, the next time you hear a good musician playing through a good tube amp and it moves you, you just think about what's going on inside that box. Now, I would like to ask you all to please go to our YouTube site and sign up for our YouTube channel so you won't miss any future videos and you'll also have access to all of the Endorsey Jam videos from Vince Gill and Craig Fuller and Dan Huff and Brent Mason and Paul Franklin and you name it we've had them play and uh, there's a lot of neat surprises our house band is usually uh, worth the price of admission if we didn't have the stars anyway uh, I look forward to seeing you at our next installment video. Uh, so until then, Phil Bradbury for Little Walter Two Vance.